Gloria. Uh, I have been in Better Barista for about four to five years now. So this is my fifth year in. And what I do here, I actually teach um, as one of the main trainers in Better Barista. And I teach uh, a lot for the SEA classes and even WSQ. Um, I think what I enjoy a lot is actually being able to teach a lot of different people from different kind of backgrounds. Uh, being able to teach people who are coffee enthusiasts and those who are actually just learning about coffee or just want to do it as a lifestyle or are interested in just knowing what coffee is. It brings me a lot of joy whenever they're learning and it gives me more knowledge at the same time because I learn as they learned. Um, I also start getting very, very geeky over coffee uh, after a period of time when I notice there's some things I do not know. Right? And you start researching and researching. So it actually uh, brings up the learning that I love to have. I love to learn. I love to always find something new. I love to geek out about things. So that's the things I enjoy in better. Yeah. Something that blew me away about coffee during uh, the learning process and when I was doing research and all that uh, was during a class in a professional class with Rob Hoos and what he spoke about was about the thermocouples and thermocouples are the thermometers that actually read the temperature that you need to chart and to think of what temperature is going on in your roasters so what he said was that the thermocouples do not read what you think it reads it reads itself and it's interesting yeah mind blown boom right and you just think about it in such a way that how do you put it uh, what does it mean is that the beans rolling around the thermometer okay it depends on how thick or how thin the, the thermometer is okay it takes time for that heat to actually like kind of transfer to the thermometer and because of that um, depending on how fast or how slow it affects how accurate the reading will be so it really depends on the technology of the thermocouple Oh, okay, so what do I wish for better in its 10th year? I think 10 is a quite a, it's like a whole number in a way that uh, it shows how long a company has been. And after COVID, what I basically do wish is that the company survives through and gets better and improves along this way because COVID has struck down a lot of situations in Singapore. And a lot of companies also had a hard time. And what's even more to come is for the company to grow is for probably more trainers, right? And also probably at the same time, um, an avenue for more training, for bigger training, for even more coffee awareness, and even more F&B, food and beverage awareness around Singapore. And what more, the rest of the world. And also overcoming all the COVID issue, issues around. Yeah. Okay, hi everyone. So, this is my favorite brew device. It looks really pretty, right? Okay, so this is actually a December dripper. Okay, it actually has a maximum of 12 holes on it. As you can see, hello. Okay, so 12 months in a year, December dripper. And with that, you can see it's very similarly designed like the Kalita. Okay, so this is, a, this is another form of it. Now, you can actually adjust, okay, how many holes you want it to have. So you can have it at 8 holes on each side, 12 holes on each side, even 4 holes on each side. So that's what I love about the December. So why did I choose this as my favourite device is because um, I have a lot of geeky things that I can play with it. And it allows me to control my flow rate and also I have a hack that I'll share later. Okay, so we'll go to that. Okay, okay. so I'm going to start brewing right now. Okay, this is the filter paper. It's very similar to the filter paper from Kalita, which is 185. Okay, so now December Dripper has their own, but the design is the same, okay? Now, with that said, I'm going to put this in, okay? And here you go. Let me tell you my recipe first. I am going to brew a coffee at 116, okay? So one gram of coffee to 16 grams of water. And I'm going to brew it at around 96 degrees Celsius. And at the same time, I am brewing, okay? Our own home roasted, better barista roasted, okay? Guatemala coffee, okay? That is Hue Hue Tenango, okay? And it actually is a fully washed processed coffee. Okay, one of my favorites, okay, around in Better Barista. So we're gonna brew this. And what I have here is 25 grams of coffee. And I'm gonna grind it with the Bravo grinder, which is actually a very uh, easy to use and a very efficient home grinder over here. I'm gonna grind it at around a medium coarse grind, more towards slightly more coarser, around grind size 50. 
okay? And I have an electric kettle over here, which I'm using to, so it's actually called the Barista Electric Kettle, okay? No, so now let's move on to the brewing process. So I'm going to place this very nice and sexy decanter that I like to use. It has measurements on it. I'm using a, a SEA, okay? Weighing scale, okay, the pole. And I'm going to weigh everything first. Okay, this part I need to pause. The whole assayer changed setting. There we go. Okay. Now, for this portion, I'm going to turn it to three holes. Okay. Align it a little bit nicely. And I'm going to pre-wet the filter paper. And I'm going to allow this water to wash the filter paper and also warm up my device. At the same time, I will be grinding my coffee that is pre-weighed at 25 degree, uh, 25 grams, right? Okay, so starting the grinder. Now, let the grinder talk because after that, you can't hear me anymore. Okay, now you can hear me means it's all done. Here's a coffee. Okay. You can even have a stopper here to actually seal it up a little bit before you actually start pouring it out. So right over here. Okay. I am going to turn it back to one hole on each side to do a pre-wet. Okay. Alright, empty out the water. After which, tear the entire device, pour in the coffee. Okay, checking that it's 25. Great, awesome. Oh, loud sound. Okay, the grinder speaks. Okay, here you go. Then, Evening out the coffee bed, making sure that everything is even and precise. Okay, what geeks do, hashtag. Okay, and then making sure the temperature is up to 96 degrees Celsius on an electric kettle. So speaking of which, um, what you have, what you see here is actually a device that gives you a lot of leeway in terms of adjusting of time. And very soon, okay, you, when it comes to adjust flow rate, you can actually allow yourself to have a better chance of hitting time targets that you might have in your recipe. Most of the times when I brew with a device like this, which is gravity, I would like to hit my brews within two to three minutes in small quantities, right? Now, with that said, um, what if I find that my brew may be either it's probably a little bit too slow or a little bit too fast, and that's where I can adjust the number of holes that are on it, right? So my water is up to temperature, and then I'm going to start what we first called is the bloom. Okay, starting from the center, covering all the coffees with just a little bit of water, about two times the amount of water from the coffee, looking at the bubbles bursting, right, when carbon dioxide is being released. Okay, once that coffee settles down a little bit better, okay, I am going to start pouring water. And this is about a 30 seconds wait, okay? Alright, 30 seconds now, then let's go. So I'm going to pour, and when I pour, I usually like to follow the very therapeutic circles that is formed by the crema of the coffee itself. And then open it up, making sure that the water is evenly spread throughout. Okay, and currently, I am at 200 grams of water. And I'm going to wait for it to flow down a little bit more. Okay? Now, at this point, I'll watch my time. And if I notice my time is taking a little bit too long for the set time that I have, I'm going to adjust. Okay? It seems a bit faster. It seems like it's flowing correctly. I will not make any changes. Ah, soon, soon. Very soon. Okay? So, turning, turning. Okay, now adding more water again. 
adding up to 400 based on the ratio given to you that I've said. Okay. And now if you notice, adding 200, my water is flowing slower. And it's already almost two minutes. And here's the hack. Hashtag hack. I'm turning two holes on each side now. Eight holes. Yeah. And I'm waiting for it to flow and watching the rate of flow to see if it's within my target. So now it's at two minutes. I'm hoping for it to be within two to three. Okay, and it's still flowing. It's getting faster. Okay, it's two minutes and 15 seconds right now. Going and going and going. Two minutes and 30 seconds. And it looks like it's going, going well. Water is emptying. I do not need to increase the rate anymore. Okay, so questions like, when it comes to brew, most of the time, students love to ask this question of, is there a standard recipe that is suitable for all coffees around, right? And the thought of it is just having a fixed element that suits maybe the December dripper and then that's it. Well, the answer to that is that it depends on the co coffee that you actually brew. It depends on who, it, who roasts it and what roast profile because different cultures, different countries basically have a different idea of a roast profile, maybe lighter, maybe darker. And with that, your recipes may change. And in class, we actually talk about tasting them throughout different grind sizes to actually taste. To decide whether is it a little bit too under extracted, a little bit too over extracted, or is it a balanced cup that actually pronounces what is stated on the bag and also give a very nice sweet taste that carries the flavours of the specialty coffee. Now, with that said, also, not all the time I can expect someone to buy the same grinder as I do. And even the same grinder, it has different fixtures, right? It may not be always the same um, amounts of how it's engineered together, okay? It may not be that precise. So with that said, whatever grinder you receive, and grinders are very important for coffee brewing. It's one of the essential elements when it comes to brewing your nice cup of coffee. You can experiment a lot of different ways with your different grinders, right? And with that, that gives you more flexibility. And sometimes you may just want to adjust a little bit to your preference preferred more than just what I prefer, right? So that is some of the things that actually students really talk about. Yeah. Okay, I'm excited to taste this coffee and see how it tastes like. So. Time for me to enjoy my brew. Bye bye.